Good evening, this is Bruce and uh, welcome to my shop again for peanuts and single malt number two. Uh, we've got JB from Oz, otherwise known as uh, Marcus Wilson, with me. G'day YouTube. And, and we're, we're going to go through a few things here. Um, we'll come back to that later. But basically we've got Emma's contest, which uh, JB is um, building something for that contest. Uh, and anybody who, um, who still hasn't uh, finished it, don't forget you've only got a few weeks left. Uh, we've got a Bernard co uh, collar chucks. We're going to have a look at the Bernard uh, collar chucks and uh, we're going to see who's got the best balls. Uh, then uh, we've got the assisting of lathe relocation, we'll, we'll talk about that. The True Line 88 update. Um, I've got the, we can talk about the gear indicators again, the caps that I'm wearing that are for sale, uh, and the Barzi Summer Bash uh, 2018. Now this is a shout out, we've still got places left, um, so uh, you better get in quick and, and, make, and, and get onto the Barzi um, uh, website, uh, the, the YouTube channel, and uh, book, book your way, because if you don't make a booking according to the requirements, it's as if you're not going to be there. It's only people that have done it according to the requirements. So you need to check that out. Um, and, uh, and the same with uh, uh, finding, uh, finding places. They, normally we stay there at the, uh, um, at the hotel not far from there, but people do whatever they want to do. So the Barzi Summer Bash 2018 at uh, Rancho Cucamonga. Get in there, get your bookies in and uh, we'll see you there. So um, without further ado, we'll, um, we'll focus here on, uh, on JB and he can give an explanation of his um, uh, submission or this is a prelim to his submission so you can see where we've, um, uh, how he's advanced with that. Cheers Bruce. Um, and while we're talking about Barzi Summer Bash, I noticed that Stan this morning got together with All Industrial, um, one of the sponsors. Um, there's some really fantastic uh, discount codes there in, ending in July, um, but another really good sponsor worth supporting as well because they're putting their hands in their pockets to help with the bash and prizes and all that sort of stuff. I think there's a, a 3D printer or $2,000 depending on which one of those you end up wanting. Uh, for the winner of that particular competition. So some great prizes, that one amongst them. All right, speaking of competitions, Emma Ritson from Emma's Spare Room Machine Shop has a tool making competition on at the moment. And the challenge in this tool making competition is to work with a single piece of stock. And the goal there is just to keep the complexity down a bit. Last year, there was a couple of people who were pretty ambitious with their designs. Um, and at the end of the day, didn't really end up getting their competition entries in. So to encourage a wider diversity of entrants and uh, particularly anybody who's, who's doing anything, doesn't have to be metalwork uh, to enter, Emma opened it up to make something out of a single piece of material. So my single piece of material was a bit of 80mm diameter steel and what I chose to make was a, a replacement nose for the Zocker 500. Now, I don't know if you've seen on Bruce's videos, but certainly on my channel, there's the story of the uh, rebirthing of the Zocker 500 that we picked up and is currently stored here at Gemtrek. The um, machine came with a slotting tool but it didn't come up with a, um, a shaper tool. So essentially made a few bits, had to make a bolt of course, lantern tool post, spacer ring to fit into the existing clapper box assembly. And uh, yeah Basically, next thing to do is to actually put it all together, slap it on the shaper and see if it'll actually take a cut, which I'm really confident it will. But uh, that is the way it all goes together. Now you made this, all the, and the, this and the nut, uh, the nose and the nut out of one piece, haven't you? Yeah, and then the ring was a slightly different piece just for sizing, yeah. but Emma said that was alright. So, within the scheme of things, uh, standard little lantern tool post holder for a shaper. Now, Bruce also managed to pull out of his collection of old time tool bits, a number of other traditional single point tools, many of which would have been used in a shaper. Um, slightly taller profile than normal and 
it's just suggested that I show in this particular tool holder that it also works for those as well. So essentially we can we can take the taller height tools without any dramas at all. This so. is for the heavy cutting, uh, really, really tough tools. Yeah. And the, the zocker is up to the, uh, the challenge there as well. Yeah, it's 500 millimeter stroke and a really nice machine. This is so, 24 inch stroke. Part one. Thank okay, you. so, um, Thanks for that, JB. Now we're going to uh, look at uh, Bernard uh, uh, collar chucks. So, um, I've featured them, uh, the one that I have, uh, several times in the past, and um, there are some of my videos on uh, on Bruce Witham uh, YouTube channel where you can see the Bernard chucks um, in um, uh, in usage. <coughs> there, it's quite a broad range of um, uh, six uh, six jaw. Uh, um, unit and it up, goes up to 2 inch or 50 millimeter um, diameter. Uh, it's quite, it's, I think it's 12 or 16 um, tools in there, but we'll have a look in a minute. The one that, the one that I own, uh, I, it, came, it came to me as part of a, um, uh, a Colchester lathe and um, that, that had uh, three uh, uh, a D14 or D13 or D14 uh, pins in it. I took those pins out and I use it. I just chuck it directly into my three jaw chuck on the lathe, uh, and it's a pretty uh, pretty accurate. Um, having uh, said that, the it depends on what you're doing. But, that, but at any rate, that's worked very well for me. Uh, it's had a lot of people enthused about how good they are and. Um, JB managed to score one and I'll turn over to him and he can show you uh, what it's about and then we'll have a look at who's got the best balls. Cheers again Bruce. Alright so luckily I was able to find this advertised on uh, eBay as a burner chuck. So much like in the US you'll have burner phones when you don't want to be identified. Being a burner chuck this one wasn't really identified by any of the other punters so I was able to get it at starting bid. Um, the particular fitting on the back of this is designed for an L0 Leblon taper. So it's taper with a, a pin and then a screw on lock to lock it onto the jaws. Or otherwise known as, uh, otherwise known as uh, the American long nose um, uh, connection. And uh, similar to my old uh, Colchester lathe and Keith Fenner's lathe, they have the same screw arrangement, uh, the taper and screw arrangement. So there had been some modifications made in to the, the screw on this one. It's actually been ground away in three locations. So I imagine that the previous owner has done what Bruce is now doing and chucked it up in a three jaw because they didn't have that taper. So uh, being the way we are, we talked some squirrels and we might have to see if we can do some roundabouts. Um, essentially I've got a D14 cam lock on my AL960B. Bruce doesn't have a D14 or anything. So we started to talk about uh, maybe some magic could happen and a bit of switcheroos and a bit of what's the names but um, in terms of the detail of that I've cleaned mine up and it sounds a little bit gritty still and um, Bruce's of course has had much less wear and you can see that's Hollywood absolutely Hollywood so there's a bit of gritty or jumpy or something like that so what we thought we'd do is pull it apart check the balls to see if this one's actually still round or still at size potentially order another set of balls. But that's uh, the ball comparison that Bruce is on about. Yeah, and uh, you can show the, the, the box of collets as well. Ah, yeah. So, the EC collet is a spring-loaded collet arrangement. Again, six drawers as Bruce has mentioned. And that arrangement slots into the nose. The cap the, is key. The, the cap, the cap has a key, and that key, uh, uh, that uh, slot, I should say, and that slot fits onto the key, and then you screw, screw that up and lock it in, lock it in place with this key here, uh, similar, similar to a uh, a Jacobs. Uh, maybe we'll show it around that way so you okay. can see. Ah, oh, there we go. So it's similar to a Jacobs chuck or, or one like that. So there we have it. Yeah. So I, I think at the moment, 
Uh, I win, my balls are better than uh, than JB's, but uh, we'll, um, we'll remedy that and we're certainly going to be do, doing a swap over and uh, I'll be giving uh, JB mine for the D13, D14 and, um, and I'll take his and I may or may not grind the thread off uh, for a, a fit or um, straight into my uh, three jaw chuck. So that's that part of it. And what else have we got here? Uh, back back on the Zocker, um, these, this was a foot plate with a bolt through it and wheels on it. Uh, and and that, um, <coughs> that's the way we move, we move the Zocker around. Now what I've done is I've taken some old bar and welded it on and this is going to be the feet for the zocker with with a piece of uh, rubber plate underneath it so that's the next <coughs> that'll be the next stage with the zocker uh, of setting it up in tucking it into a position where it sticks out as least as possible but it's most usable uh, for me so it's going to be a bit more rearranging um, there's a couple of things still to be done on the zocker and uh, the next stage with that will be making up some tooling for cutting keyways because that's the main purpose that we'll be using the um, uh, using it for and r roughing work as well. Yep. Um, so what else have we got, uh, JB? So we're we're, well, we're happy with with all yeah. of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so the other thing we can uh, show is that <coughs> I went. Um, I was talking about before. We've got. <coughs> my um, uh, true line 88 um, unit that I've uh, that I've made as a fix for round column drills and mills uh, like the one behind me here the RF 30s RF 32s many many derivatives and I've shown that on the video already uh, and what we what we've done here is uh, we've we've set up a um, an indicator you can see that over there. We've, there we go. We've set up an indicator on the quill uh, to be able to. Um, I'll go a little bit. There we go. So we'll be able to indicate up and down just to show how um, uh, how accurate this is. And uh, of course, we're not looking for uh, for a super accuracy. What we're looking for is to make it uh, much easier to take that frustration away from the owners of the round uh, column mills. So but further on that, at the moment I'm taking expressions of interest. There's been quite a bit of it and they, um, my emails have been running over with it, but you can, uh, anybody who has one, uh, just a heads up at the moment, it doesn't matter what the brand is, there's basically two sizes of columns that we've identified so far. A 92 millimeter, call that whatever inch size you want and 115 which is equivalent to about four and a half inch they're because they've all come out of uh, either china or um or taiwan originally from taiwan the wrong food and so forth um they uh they are millimeter they are metric but it doesn't matter if there's a slight differences between them we could the 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 system will accommodate that i'm um, also looking at at possibly fitting in a scale uh, to go with it, a height scale, which will give her then a, um, uh, a, Z, a Z reading for moving the head up and down. Um, but that's that, all that is in the future and I'll be uh, showcasing it at the Barzi Summer Bash. So just a quick one, if um, expressions of interest and uh, purchasing of the caps uh, or my indicators, I'll just grab one indicator as well, um, you send me an email to Bruce Get Her Out at, um, at gmail.com and uh, once again there's been quite a lot of interest recently of these uh, of these gear indicators and uh, we, we have uh, we have some stocks and we're sending them out uh, furiously at the moment so uh, anybody's interested in that send me an email and uh, we'll, uh, we'll gladly sort it out. Uh, the um, email address is um, brucegetterout at gmail.com and that's also my, my PayPal account. 
So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on peanuts and uh, single malt number three. Bye.